Episode 8, The Theft. I will do whatever you say. What do you need? I need you to rob the Vatican. What? That's impossible. Impossible is exactly what I want from you. Squeezing her eyes shut, Nova pressed her thumb and index finger against her eyelids, trying to concentrate. What exactly do you need me to steal? The conduit. Vesper, do you even understand what you're asking? She does. The conduit will allow us to initiate others on our own. This would be a huge advantage. Just imagine all the possibilities that would open up for us. Even if some, by some miracle I managed to get it out of the Vatican, the church wouldn't just let it go. The confrontation could escalate into war. Are others ready for that? That won't happen. Not right away, at least. The church would never admit to the public that we stole such an important artifact. They can barely handle the unrest that the Pope's unhealthy appearance is causing. The Vatican was still doing its best to deny all the rumors about the Pope's illness, but Nova remembered the truth that Renato shared with her on the day of her initiation. The Magistrum will increase patrols and look for culprits, but they'll do it quietly. Meanwhile, we will be searching for the source and preparing in case it does come to war. Her tone sent unpleasant goosebumps down the catcher's spine. The already heavy atmosphere got even grimmer. Onyx's ears drooped, or age, or shrank into his chair. Shen frowned, and Lucian stared thoughtfully at the ceiling. Anyway, this is our condition. You will get in touch with your contact at the Vatican. Tell them that you need access to the conduit. Let's say to expand your potential. You'll then go there, take the conduit, come back, and give it to us. This will serve as a testament to your loyalty to the Incineration Alliance. I don't know what to think. You're sending to my, to my dad. We're going to need a very good plan. This operation is doomed to fail. Let's be positive. A flawless one. Maybe then we'll have at least a small chance of success. She shook her head, not quite believing her own words. This present, however, looked satisfied with her answer. The corner of Esper's mouth twitched up for a moment. Well, let's see how things go this time. Walking towards the hotel where she was supposed to meet Renata, Nova was vainly trying to calm her agitated heart. She was still a little embarrassed about all the things that were left unsaid between them. She knew, however, that they couldn't have an honest conversation about that. After all, he was still a priest, so even handing at him having a romantic interest would be inappropriate. Once at the door, the young woman shook the melting snowflakes off of her clothes. The snow hadn't stopped turning to slush as soon as it touched the ground. Rome was showing character. Observer and narrator. Protector. Harbringer. Guardian. Hmm. I like the basic outfit. It's nice. The 80s called. They want their belt buckle back. All good. You also unlock versions without them. Hmm. I like the first hat, but, uh, hold on, let me think. Yeah, why not? All good. The catcher ran through the prepared speech in her head once again. He, her actually joining the incineration alliance didn't mean she wouldn't have to lie anymore. Now she just had to lie to other people, her father and Renata. She knocked and the door opened slightly before slipping into the room. Nova stuck to her old habit and looked around to check that she didn't have a tail, although uh, now she knew she had one this entire time. Hello. Hello, Renata. He gestured at the table, inviting her to sit, and they settled opposite each other. Eh. Get to the point. 
I guess I'll cut straight to the point. You probably heard on the news that two people broke into St. Deliagarlo Degli Orificici. Renata nodded, placing his hands on the table, interlacing his fingers. His face took on a thoughtful, focused expression. Did you find what you were looking for? Vesper opened that box, but they didn't tell me what was inside. Even if I tell him what we found in the church, it won't change anything. <sighs> Lie. Eh, tell him the truth. Yes, it turned out that Raffaello, or someone else at his request, had hidden a locked box under the church floor. We managed to unlock it, but the mechanism is stuck. Vesper is looking for someone who can open it without damaging its contents. His eminence will be glad to hear such news. I suppose he will, but that's not why I asked to meet with you tonight. I was studying old text and came across something curious. Several books mentioned that if I initiated other performs, uh, the ritual with the conduit again, it can help them achieve even greater potential. And you want to try that? Vesper wants me to try that. No, for the conduit is in the Vatican Garden. I don't think that is even remotely possible. I told her the same thing, but she refuses to hear it. She said we had to try. He looked away. I don't know much about her. But she did seem like a person who would insist on such a desperate move. I thought it was strange, too. Maybe there's something going on she hasn't told me about. Something that is compelling her to take such greater risks. Of a skilled and confident in her ability to lie, pushing guilt to the back of her mind. Regardless, I'm going to have to break into the Vatican and get to the conduit. I was hoping for the Cardinal Baron's help. Could you talk to him for me? The priest frowned, putting his hand to his chin and leaned back in his chair. His eminence went to Austria yesterday on a pastoral visit after the incident in Villache. What happened there? I'm surprised you haven't heard. I don't read newspapers, I hardly watch the news, and I, I don't leave the nest unless it's absolutely necessary. My mind is preoccupied with the mission. I see. Well, that's probably good for you. So what happened in Village? Ah, right. He fidgeted as if uncomfortable discussing it. A group of others came into the conflict with the parishioners of one of the churches. They were arrested, but before that... <clears throat> The deacon of the church died in the hospital from injuries inflicted on him during the confrontation. Needless to say, it got a tremendous response from the public, so his eminence decided to pay a pastoral visit to support the local faith. Maybe the others were only defending themselves. That's how it always goes, the news tell you an exaggerated version of the story, when in reality everything could have been completely different. I'm sorry, it's probably not easy for you to hear about this. Nova ran her fingers over the mark on left on her wrist. What makes you say that? He sighed, pursing his lips as if he wasn't sure he should give her an honest answer. Eventually, he decided to do it. Because you are another. Hearing about the crimes committed by the clergy makes me sick. It makes me feel like I too committed a shameful act, as though uh, being in the same group but such people means there's something wrong with me as well. I assumed that what happened in the village might have caused you similar feelings. The catcher shrugged, thinking of a diplomatic response that wouldn't expose her loyalty to the Alliance. She was well aware that there were cruel and truly dangerous people among others, those that everyone should be afraid of, not just ordinaries. In the past, knowing that was enough for her to justify everything that the governments, the magistrate, and the church were doing to suppress the magical population. In the past, she believed her father. If even God was against them, surely they were undeserving of life. But now... Now she was angry. She was angry at the whole world for all the time she had lived convinced of her own wrongness. I'm no worse than any ordinary... I'm a human being, too. No one has the right to decide what I'm worthy or unworthy of. Are you all right? The woman didn't notice that she clenched her fins. Emerging from her thoughts, she quietly agreed. You're right. It's, it's not easy for me, hearing about the crimes others committed. That's why you and I joined the Cardinal, to fulfill God's will and put an end to all this. 
The words seemed to touch something in his soul. He looked away from her face and in his own hands. Nova, have you ever... Have I ever what? Uh, nothing. Never mind. I have a feeling this is important. Talk to me. You and I bear a huge responsibility. Any hidden worries might make the load too heavy. The priest dropped his face over with his hands. Taking a closer look at him, Nova noticed the mark that fatigue had left on him. Shadows settled under his eyes, and his brows were tense. Have you ever had doubts? She asked, cautious, about what? That what we're doing is right. I don't quite understand what you're talking about. I think you do. For a few moments, there was nothing but silence. Lately, I find myself thinking that some of the church's laws go against what we know about the Lord. The sacred text says that he was merciful, that he loves all of his children. Yet the Vatican keeps trying to make the world believe that the others are unworthy of his love. Why? Something in the catcher's chest fluttered as these words left his lips. She knew Renato was accepting of others, but they never discussed it so openly. What if this is a test? She didn't want to suspect him, but knew she couldn't take any chances. We are not his children. All things were made and came into existence through him. Without him, even one thing was made that was come into being. It isn't possible that he didn't want you to exist. That would go against the very idea of the creator god. The devil is also his creation. His destiny is a lake filled with the burning sulfur. Even if people with presence were originally part of the Lord's plan, this doesn't mean that he accepts us anymore. But who are we to determine who he does and does not accept? Isn't it that why he endowed us with free will so that we could make our own decisions instead of masking our opinions and beliefs as his divine plan? He looked so lost, so unimaginably sad and angry, he put his elbows on the table and rested his head in his hands. I've wondered about this before, but somehow I always managed to convince myself that I was doing everything right. It was a, a sin to question the laws of the church, that I was but a servant. Everything that happened was now is so much bigger than me, so higher, that it's not worth even thinking about. Besides, I'm sh ashamed to admit this, it was convenient not to think about that way I could climb the ladder, gain status. But now, these thoughts, these... They keep me awake. I'm scared. Scared to leave everything as it is. And scared to change anything. I can't talk about this with other ministers. They could accuse me of heresy. The priest looked into the woman's eyes, desperately searching for something to cling to. His voice became lower, quieter, but more resolved at the same time. If I decided I could no longer serve the institution I was going to devote my entire life to, would it be a betrayal of my faith? Would God turn away from me? Maybe he already has, since I'm tormented by doubt. If I stayed, would I, would I be able to live with myself, knowing the role I played? Would I be able to continue branding people, telling them that they're, they're children of the devil? Never clenched the fabric of her clothes in her hands as the questions ate into her own heart like shards of glass. She wanted to help him, comfort him, but she knew he had to find his own way. I'm afraid I don't have any answers. You know, I've never felt so abandoned by him before. Putting her hand on his shoulder, the catcher allowed herself a small, warm smile. Even if he leaves you, you'll have me. I'm your friend. Thank you, Nova. Can I count on you to keep this conversation secret, especially from the Cardinal? Of course. Let's get back to business. I can't stay too long. He nodded. Manova ordered herself to get a grip. So, his eminence will not be able to help anytime soon. Yes, but... I know the catacombs whip. Perhaps I could get you into the Vatican through them. You? I don't sound so surprised. I, I might get offended. Yes, me, Cardinal Barone, would undoubtedly be able to do more for you, but if the Alliance doesn't want to wait, then this is your only option. If someone finds out that you were a part of this, you may lose your priesthood or worse. 
you don't have the influence of a cardinal. I'll make sure it will be hard to connect me to the theft. You don't have to worry about that. Are you going in alone? No, there will be more people with me. Two, maybe three. We plan to disguise ourselves as magistrate enforcers. I think it will work. I'll plan everything in the next couple of days. Try to convince the Alliance to wait a little longer. All right. I'll be waiting to hear from you then. Be careful. Absolutely. Nova smiled at him and left the hotel. A few days later. Nova was sitting on her bed, her arms wrapped around her knees. I can't believe we're going to rob the Vatican. What will Father think of this when he finds out? It's good that he thinks I'm still loyal to the church. This way he will do everything to protect me. And I will betray him when the time comes. The witch sniffed. She didn't think the Cardinal Barone meant her any harm, but she knew that if she made him choose, he would choose the mission over her. No matter what she did, no matter how hard she tried, though, he was willing to sacrifice anything, including her. I don't know what to, I'll do if I were in his place. Obviously, my faith is in uh, much weaker than his, since I decided to actually join the Alliance. She closed her eyes, but instead of worrying about the mission ahead, her mind decided to throw an image of Onyx and Talus at her. I only seen them a few times over the last couple days, just briefly. Onyx has been avoiding me, Talus still says hello, but keeps his distance as well. I expected this, but I miss them both so much. Everything is really over, huh? The witch sighed heavily and bit her lip. I need to clear my head and get my thoughts in order. I can't go on such an important mission in this state. Throwing on the first clothes she could grab, the catcher decided to go to the roof. The unusual cool air tinged her cheeks. Holding out her hand, Nova watched the snowflakes instantly melt from the warmth of her body. She wiped her palm on the clothes, came a little closer to the edge. Almost all the windows in the neighboring houses were dark. Most people were fast asleep. The woman allowed herself to lose track of time for a while. Soon a familiar feeling stirred in her chest. Onyx. Her familiar knew where she was, and it seemed like she wanted to talk. Or not. The anamorphics froze somewhere nearby, but didn't dare to approach. I can't do this anymore. Onyx, please, let's talk. A quiet sigh was followed by soft footsteps. She hesitated, but eventually came over and stood near, her arms folded over her chest. They stood in silence for a couple of minutes, the night breeze carrying away the confusing their thoughts and quiet howl howling somewhere in the distance. Nova could barely stand the tension coming from Onyx, but struggled to find anything to say. How... how are you and Talith? I'm sure you can imagine. Daring to turn to her, the witch saw that her lips were almost blue from the cold. You're freezing. Cats don't like low temperatures. Nova was about to ask why she went outside then, but instead turned to the swing and took a blanket someone had left there. Alora Fiendra. The blanket warmed up and the witch smiled. She hadn't been able to perform this spell before. However, the joy was short-lived. The sudden scent of fire hit her nose, and she quickly stomped out of the burning edge of the fabric. Oops. During a chuckle, Nova looked at Onyx, but she was quick to put her serious expression back on. She came over and threw the blanket over the other woman's shoulders, wrapping herself tightly in it. The anamorphics grunted. Will it catch on fire? No, probably not. A silence hit again, but this time a softer kind. The they looked at the horizon together. Are you anxious? A little. Me too. Maybe you should stay at the nest. I know you have a lot of experience with this kind of thing, but Onyx, what if something... No, I'm coming with you. If something goes wrong, and I, 
I'm not there to help you. I wouldn't forgive myself. Noah whispered, putting her heart on the line. Despite everything I've done? She felt like she'd spent an eternity waiting for an answer. Maybe she had no right to ask, no right to hope after the pain she caused. Onyx slowly stepped closer, her brow furrowed, her pupil slightly dilated, but the witch couldn't make out exactly what that meant. I was so afraid of getting burned, but decided that I should put my fears aside and trust you. I guess that was a mistake. Was it, Nova? What happened between us was not a lie. It was real. How do I know that? How can you prove you won't hurt me again? All Nova did was shake her head. They both knew she had nothing to offer aside from her word. But that was worthless. Do you hate me? On exposure her lips, the catcher could have reached for their connection to find out the truth, but she wanted to hear it from her. I'm so mad at you for lying, for making me your familiar, your story about your adopted father and childhood. Her voice trembling, she ran her hand over her face, trying to control her emotions. It explains a lot, but it doesn't justify anything. I'll need time to figure this out. Of course. Take as long as you need. Sighing, Onyx turned to leave. Nova watched her go. She took a couple steps, but suddenly froze her shoulders, tensed. In the next second, Onyx was near her again, pulling the witch into a kiss. Nova sobbed, clinging to her as if Onyx was the only one who could protect her. Protect her from the complex, strange, and sometimes ugly world, and protect the catcher from herself. Nova buried her fingers in the anamorphics's hair, drowning the soft, familiar smell. Onyx caressed her back, neck, cheeks, as if she wanted the memory of her warmth to stay with her forever. Their connection intensified, the sensations they layered upon each other, enveloping them, promising a temporary refuge. The sparkling tenderness pierced through the layers of bitter pain and a ray of light, and the catcher so desperately wished to believe that it would be enough to heal the wounds. But feeling Onyx's fingers tremble, she realized that while this kiss healed some of the wounds, it also deepened others. She was about to pull away, suddenly afraid that they were making a mistake, but the woman would let her, having her arms and tail tighter around her. Don't let go, please. Nova just nodded, embracing her again, running her tongue over her lips that tasted like tears. Tears and hope. A blind, beautiful hope that not everything was lost. Nova kissed her, giving all she had. Finally, Onyx sighed. Pulling back slightly, she put both hands on the witch's cheeks and looked at her as she was the most precious thing in the world, and therefore the most dangerous. There is a lot I'm still uncertain about, Nova, but there's one thing I know for sure. I could never hate you, even if I should. A cold fire seized the catcher's soul. Somehow she both wanted and feared hearing those words. She wasn't sure she deserved such kindness. She leaned in and kissed Onyx on the tip of her nose, and then she let go. After taking one last look at her, Onyx left. I have to give her time to figure everything out. Just because we she kissed me doesn't mean she can forgive me. She rubbed her eyes. Is she going to tell Talus about this? Neva was confused about her own desires. Part of her expected that if something did happen between her and Onyx, her incomprehensible feelings for the Animorphic's friend would begin to fade. However, instead, Nova found herself thinking about what it would be like to kiss that friend. Is it possible to want this with two people at once? I guess it is, since this is what I want. Realization made her blush. What does this all mean for their friendship, or for our relationship, for all of us? I won't be able to hide my feelings for Talos. Whatever they are, 
they are from Onyx. You have to set these feelings aside later and come down from the roof. Back in her room, the catcher changed into the Magistrum Enforcer uniform. It's so weird to see myself wearing this. So these aren't like diamond choices. Okay, thank God. Uh, so dark brown. Blo oh, the hair changes. Oh, okay. Um, I'll go with red, because why not? Well, it's time. I have to be on my guard. With that thought, she left her room and headed for the vault. He tells me Shin will be the other one. Maybe Lucian. Her access had been revoked, so Nova used magic to make her presence known and waited for Vesper to let her in. Come in! Shin was already there, so was Onyx. She flushed, glancing at the catcher. She sat down at the table. Alright, so we've got Rebel for Shen. Hero. Fugitive. Mm, I go with Rebel. Almost immediately after, Lucian appeared in the room. Good evening. Has Constantino changed his mind? No. He still thinks the idea is insane and is uh, still very much against me getting involved. I'm here for moral support. That's too bad. Let's return to the catcher. Nova, there's any, any changes we should know of? None. Everything should go according to plan. Renato will leave the door unlocked for us to enter. I've memorized the path through the catacombs. We'll need to turn right twice. Then skip one turn, turn left, and take the farthest passage. I really hope I don't have to remember that, but here we go. Since Renato holds initiations, he knows where to get the key to the room. They should be keeping the conduit in. He said he'd hide it in the vase with a picture of a deer. I hate you. We'll have to deal with the guards, though. And we must stick to the schedule. If we're lucky, we can do everything quietly. Shouldn't be taking Onyx with us. Why is that? Black cats and bad luck. All that. It's only those who mess with us that have bad luck. That applies to you, too. Stop it. Let's check everything again, and then you can leave. A gaze caught on the warlock. Shin, where's the uniform? I don't want to wear it in the second longer than necessary. I'll change before we leave. You'll leave your coat here. Don't even think about arguing, even though I pay diamonds, okay? Fine. One more thing. I understand the Alliance is going through a lot right now. Shin and Onyx looked at the catcher, who was examining her own hands. We tried to set all that aside, at least for tonight. There's nothing more important right now than the conduit. Let's do this. It seems like the conduit is pointless in my opinion, but I digress. The mission started smoothly. Onyx, Shan, and Nova found their way into the Vatican catacombs through a tunnel connecting them to one of the districts of Rome. The stagnant air, the gloomy silence, made it obvious that the route was used very rarely, if at all. The catcher noticed the footprints that Renato had left when he went the same way to unlock the door for them. I hope he's as far away from here as possible now. Hey. I like your outfit. She flinched when Shin addressed her through presence. We're almost at the second turn. Shit, I have to remember this, don't I? Yeah, 
Uh, next we need to... Second turn. Uh... Okay. Do you... Okay. We're at the second turn. We need to turn right... Well, we need to turn right... Twice. Right? And then it was skip one. And then... Left. They turn. After missing the next turn, the trio went on, which we were supposed to do. Now we... Okay, so they miss the next turn. And then turn left. As soon as they left the catacombs, Hannah slipped into the shadows behind the columns and artifacts. She's going to find a secure point high up to keep an eye on the situation. The witch and the warlock strode forward. Keeping their heads low in the dead of night, the halls were mostly empty, but they remained alert, searching for the room where the conduit was supposedly to be hidden. Nova clenched and unclenched her fists, her hands in her pockets, her palms were clammy, and every time they heard voices, her heart quickened its pace. Shin appeared calm. He scanned the surroundings with a keen eye, probably cross-referencing them with the plans and blueprints of the building that he memorized. When they reached their destination, he nodded at one of the doors. Yes. That's it. There's no security. Looks like it. Maybe they stepped away for a second? Hmm. Anyway, we need to find the key. Uh, Renato hit it. Eh, I believe it was a vase. In a vase with the deer. I thought it was with a picture, unless it's just a summarization. Yeah, we'll do the deer. I know it was something to do with the deer, but it was a picture. She came up to the vase and reached inside. Key. Yay! I haven't made a single mistake so far. Yay for you. The lock clicked away too loudly. They froze with a sound, didn't seem to alert anyone. I don't like this. Members of the clergy are asleep at their homes. But the Magistrum, how could they leave something so important unattended? It is weird. Maybe they're doing some kind of exercises? Whatever it is, it, I'd better hurry. The sooner I get in, the sooner I get out. After checking the onyx was in position, Chin signaled the witch to continue with the plan. Taking a deep breath, she opened the door. Nova could hear her own pulse when she stepped into the room. Beads of sweat were running down her temples. The cap was making her forehead itchy, so she took it off. The conduit was on a platform a few steps away from her, seemingly unprotected. She went around the room looking for traps or alarms, but found nothing. Just leave an artifact like this. There, there must be something. Squinting, the catcher looked around and again recited a spell that could help identify certain types of protection. Nothing. Time was moving quickly. Too quickly. Nova knew she couldn't take too long. She bit her lip and reached for the conduit. Please, please, please. Her fingers closed on the metal sphere and... Nothing. Still nothing. <laughs> that simple? She picked it up to examine it more closely. I can't feel its power. That must be because it isn't activated? Her eyes darted to the door. I've got to hurry. Examine it. The cost of an heir is too high. I need to examine it. Putting the conduit back in its place, the catcher endured Feta Morgana. She wasn't sure what exactly she was going to look for, but decided she'd figure it out in the process. Maybe if I look into the past, I'll see if there's a catch. As soon as she touched the artifact, she frowned. It felt cramped. What the? It should be older than Raphael's painting. There should be a lot of time, a lot of space in it. Waving her hand to the air, Nova attempted to visualize the history of the conduit. This only confirmed her suspicions. It's a fake. She left Freda Morgana and stared at the item in front of her. It's just a piece of metal, about 50 years old. The woman exhaled in confusion, trying to figure out what her options were, but eventually realized that there were none. 
I'll have to leave with nothing. Cursing under her breath, she left the fake conduit where it was and moved towards the door. And then she froze, her footsteps behind her, her chest tightened with the feeling of someone's power. Incredible power. Oh shit. Turn around. Nova turned around slowly. Hello. What an unexpected meeting. Her attention immediately turned to his eyes. She knew them. When they first saw each other for the first time and the only time, he was wearing ceremonial robes and a gold mask that concealed his face. You're the... Pravis? The man nodded calmly, putting the fingertips of both hands together. You can call me... Idris. Nova, if I'm not mistaken. She watched him walk to the platform with the artifact. So I did not to take what you came here for. The catcher folded her arms across her chest. What I came for is not in this room. Hmm. Nova squinted, trying to find at least a hint of his true intentions in his expression. He was an other, but he worked for the church, so he could be willing to either help her or stop her. Yet his features were unreadable, as if he was still wearing a mask. What motivated you to take the risk? Are you seeking power? No, I'm not here for myself. You want others to be ones in control of the initiations, then? Plotting a revolution. This phrase, I don't know, like a statement, not a question. Do you think it's a bad idea? The witch tried to calculate possible defense strategies, but the sharpness of his golden eyes made it difficult to concentrate. Seconds were slipping through her fingers, but she found herself in a situation not easy. With no easy way out, she had to be careful. I refrain from making judgments. I merely ponder. Do you think others would benefit from this? The revolution would surely escalate into another full-scale war. And after learning its hardships, many will begin to miss the days when the main problems were the lack of representation in the governments, the Magistrum's aggression and troubles finding a good job. But these aren't trivial matters. Depends on what you compare them against. Still, revolution isn't something you can be fully prepared for. We don't have any plans to spill blood. Even then, blood will probably be spilled. I don't think those in power now would welcome the change. But we have something to fight for. So if we have to, that's what we'll do. And what of the lessons of your ancestors? Don't you think that now isn't the best time for a philosophical discussion? Idris shrugged indifferently, leaving her no choice. Lessons of your of our ancestors are... You talking about the War of the Great Cleansing Fire? Yes. It was far worse than it is now. Who knows? Maybe the revolution will reignite the same fire. We'll do everything we can to prevent that from happening. There's no way to guarantee it won't happen, but we also can't keep living like this, nor can we constantly look back at what happened several centuries ago. A lot has changed since then. Well... Perhaps you are right. A long pause followed. In the War of the Great Cleansing Fire, we chose the path of uh, yielding to the majority. Not because we wish to submit, no, but to avoid complete annihilation. At the time, it seemed like the only way out. She understood less and less what was going on. Oh, come on! Oh! I hate you so much right now. We were getting so close. So close. We're seven behind on status. What's this all about? I'm sorry for being blunt, but I came here to steal the conduit, not to chat. As it turned out, what I was looking for isn't here. Which means I have to get out of here as soon as possible. So, I need to know what you want from me. I guess I couldn't, shouldn't count on you knowing and telling me where the real conduit is. I do know where it is, but I can't tell you. As you can guess, the church is very diligent about protecting one of the most 
important artifacts of others. I'm under a spell that forbids me to talk about the place where it's hidden. But I'm a time catcher. You're a time catcher. Idris squinted and he nodded. You can take a look at my memories that way. I won't have to tell you anything. Are you saying you're ready to help me get the conduit? Yes. Even now, he spoke evenly, not allowing a single emotion to slip his face. There's no telling if this is the right decision. But I've made it. I made it a long time ago. I knew someone would come for it someday. She stared at him, unsuccessfully trying to figure out what was going on in his head. But what will happen to you? I'm not sure. Nothing good, I suspect. But I've already done enough. This is my choice. Go on, then. You need your memories about uh, from about a year ago. That was the last time I saw the relic. Closed his eyes. The catcher hesitated, but eventually entered Fata Morgana. Let's see. Touching his chest, she immediately felt a surge of unbridled energy that could knock her off her feet. Nova didn't take her hand away. She struggled to redirect her own power. She could feel it, the strength of an ancient artifact that both terrified and amazed her. A year ago, but when exactly? Off to search for a while. Remembering Emiliano's advice about visualizing time in different ways, she decided to try a new approach by spreading images from Idris's memory onto a canvas. There were so many of them, all colorful, vying for her attention, but none held what she was searching for. She did find something else, though. The same room, a man who also tried to steal the conduit. Hmm. Idris's words made me assume no one had attempted that, but I guess I misunderstood. It would be pretty strange if no one had thought of it before me. Nova let out a fragment, let go of the fragment, and was about to continue searching, but she felt a heaviness in her stomach, a sensation similar to what she experienced through the initiation, but turned up to maximum. What started as a pleasant feeling of power sharpened into an unbearable pain. Leaving Fata Morgana, the catcher wanted to pull her hand back, but Idris held her wrist tightly with both hands. Golden eyes burned with a furious fire. And that was when Nova realized what was happening. He... He is the object. He's killing me. Oh. Okay, I was thinking maybe he was connected to the conduit, but okay. Listen, you guys already got a bunch of diamonds out of me. Uh, without further ado, I give you a five-star rating. So, we've got two to sun, three to moon, three to status. It wasn't enough, but one to power. Let's get those diamonds. Alright, so, got our diamonds. Operation at the Vatican takes an unexpected turn. So, right now, the next episode is currently blocked. Um, unfortunately, it does not come out till the end of September. So, do keep that in mind. Uh, which, let me check on that real quick. Uh, looks to be a Thursday or Friday. Hopefully it's the latter. It falls on the 26th because I will jump on that ASAP. Um, though I will be a little busy on the 25th. Thankfully it doesn't come out on the 25th. So, before I begin talking, uh, first and foremost, thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And now description. Plenty of things to check out, ways to support. It'd be greatly appreciated. Um, aside from that, uh, so far, good, good writing. Good writing. Um, man. What to, what to really say about this chapter. All right, so pretty much I'll make some speculations. Um, so as you saw, that guy had a bunch of ruins on him, right? Um, something tells me that there's probably like a fail safe with him where we, we did something and it triggered like this, this mechanism and him where basically the, his power would um, be like a tidal wave hitting us back, right? About the best way to put it. Uh, again, we're with Shannon Onyx, so hopefully they'll, I mean, Shannon, I'm sure, will sense the massive power, right? He's just outside the room. And then also Onyx herself, because she's connected to us, also sense what's happening. So, you know, clearly nothing's going to happen to us. Uh, again, I think it was just a failsafe, really. Uh, I initially thought the guy might be linked to the thing, since he had such massive power in the whole nine yards, and maybe it was just something to, to do with, you know, you needed someone to unlock the potential in someone else, which is not really 
um, how can I put this, far gone conclusion or far gone assumption or whatnot. Uh, there's even a lot of anime and whatnot based on that. So, yeah, no, it's kind of cool. Um, aside from that, yeah, no, I don't know what else to say. So, let me know in your com in the comments down below your opinion, what you think is happening, has happened, or will happen. So. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned for the end of September to find out what happens next, which, uh, yeah, no, we'll be going on uh, the last two episodes will be this season finale. So I don't know if they'll put a season three in, but we'll see. Thanks again for watching. Catch you all later. Peace out.